Okay, so yes. I am in the process of doing a bunch of data cleanup, right? Like we have, I am not as technical as I once was these days. I mean, I'm still really technical, but I don't do the day-to-day -day cool tech stuff that you do with these cool stuff. I do a lot of boring business stuff like finance. And one of the things I've been tasked with is uh, my sales team wants a tighter integration between HubSpot and Manage. We have some stuff synced right now, but they want to go all the way to using opportunities. Uh, so I started driving down the road of what it looks like to do that, and I ran into a problem. I had an overzealous salesperson years ago that loaded several thousand prospects into Manage. So my Manage is an absolute mess. So I decided I was going to clean that up and delete them. And if anyone has ever tried to delete uh, uh, companies out of manage it's not fun uh, you end up with this thing where like if depending on certain child records you can't delete them there's a bunch of other things so i'm like i can go ahead and automate this so i drove down the road of creating a workflow to automate and delete uh manage uh, uh companies and i very quickly ran into a problem with types right like you cannot uh if i couldn't delete the company my goal was i'm just going to mark it inactive and i'm going to set a given type on it but uh, and that sorry, sorry, roost people. None of the internal actions for types inside of uh, manage work. They're they're all they're all wonky and broken for a variety of reasons. So I had to drive down the road of building this this lovely workflow here. Uh, and this lovely workflow basically takes a company ID, it takes a type, and then it takes an operation. The operation could be add, delete, or replace. And it does what it says on the label, right? Like, so now I have a sub workflow that I can use anywhere, and I'll happily share this if anyone wants it. It's not super complicated. Uh, that can it, that can basically add a, a company type to a company. It can delete a company type for a company, and it can replace one if it doesn't exist. Uh, it has pretty good error handling. It will error out if like it does, does things weird, and it provides useful error values. I then took that workflow uh, and I created this interesting delete or inactivate record workflow that basically just takes a company ID. Uh, it goes to the company and it looks up. I started with three conditions that I knew you couldn't delete a company for. It looks them up. If you can delete it, then it uh, then it deletes it happily. Uh, if it cannot delete it, then it posts a message to our Slack indicating why it couldn't delete it. It go ahead. It, it uses that new sub workflow I created to uh, set the company to a type. In this case, it's usually inactive, uh, and then it also deletes another type, which I'll get to in a second here, and then it moves on its merry way. Then I took. Uh, all of those things, and I combined them into one giant thing called the CW company that literally does nothing but run in a loop. And so what this has allowed me to do is I can run through manage and just add a type called delete to all of my companies that I wish to delete. And then I can go ahead and run the sub workflow or this workflow here, and it will handily go through and delete the companies. I have estimated, I just now put the time savings on these, right? I would estimate that for every one of them that I need to go through and see if I can delete it or not, it takes me about a minute for messing with the company types. It takes me about 30 seconds. Uh, I ran this in production finally uh, and deleted uh, a, a subtotal of about 1300 companies. Uh, and those 1300 companies resulted in 10,000 tasks in a time savings of likely exceeding a day. Uh, for me to go ahead and do this. Uh, I was actually particularly proud of this because it ran uh, it ran through 1900 or 1390 records here. And of that, I had seven total failures, which as it turns out, were just cases I didn't handle. It turns out you can't delete a company that has an open PO. And for some reason I had tagged some vendors with P with that. So I had to add some additional error handling. Uh, but this is just a nice simple thing that, you know, it's a nice quality of life thing. And it, it's, it, I brought it to you guys to to make you think out of the box, right? Like a lot of us end up using uh, Roost for a lot of really technical workflows, but man, there are a lot of workflows and stuff you can do outside of the technical realm with it too. That's it.